and welcome to Anfield on the final day of the FA Barclay Card Premiership season. A vital match here for both Liverpool and Ipswich. Ipswich needing a win and a favour from Derby to secure their place in the Premiership. Liverpool seeking the win that would guarantee them second place in the table ahead of Manchester United and automatic qualification for the Champions League without having a nervous day for both sets of fans. 3,000 of the Tractor Boys have made the trip from Suffolk on a sunny afternoon here in Merseyside. It's the Liverpool anthem that's ringing around this ground trying to inspire the home side to what would be their Premiership position and their best league position for 11 years since finishing runners-up to Arsenal back in 1991. A win is the only result that would guarantee Liverpool that scenario. A draw here against Ipswich could still let Manchester United in to be runners-up. So an eager sense of anticipation at this great stadium ahead of the arrival now of the two teams. weekend for East Anglia at the end of which the region could have two teams in the Premiership or none. A Liverpool win as well as securing second place and automatic entry to the group phase of the Champions League would put them ahead of Newcastle for boasting the Premiership's best home record. They've been beaten only twice here in the league this season. Well interesting decisions in terms of the strikers omitted from both teams today. Nicholas Anelka, who'd looked on this as his last chance to prove what he feels he's worth, is only on the substitutes bench. Anelka, who's hoping to make his lone move from Paris Saint-Germain permanent, played as part of a front three with Michael Owen and Emil Heskey in midweek, but the England pairing are, in, are retained, while the man left out of the French World Cup squad faces more disappointment. Abel Xavier returns to the defence, and if Gary McAllister's to get an emotional farewell before going off to manage commentary, he'll have to do so as a substitute. Ray Wilkins, how do you think Liverpool will line up? Will it obviously be their, their usual 4-4-2 over the thought, Rob? The back five of that lot, apart from Xavier, appears to have played in every game this season. Very, very consistent, conceding just 30 league goals. Jerry Murphy, uh, Danny Murphy, sorry, comes in on the right side. I think he'll play a little bit more narrow than that, uh, but a very, very strong looking midfield section. With Emil Heskey and Michael Owen, the two front players. Ipswich's survival could hinge on a call to arms for 18-year-old Darren Bent. The youth product who ensured the side's last victory against Middlesbrough makes only his second premiership start alongside namesake Marcus Bent, getting the call ahead of candidates such as Alan Armstrong and Marcus Stewart, who got the winner here last season. There's no Fanidi George, who looks likely to have played his last game for the club, but Mark Venus's return after a groin injury will strengthen the defence. Yeah, once again a 4-4-2 formation, Rob. Uh, Ipswich, in contrast to conceding, Liverpool conceding 30, they've conceded 59 goals. Jamie Clapham will play on the right side, not the left side. I think that's to, to cope with the, the threat of Risa down Liverpool's left. And up front we have Marcus Bent and the young Darren Bent in a 4-4-2 formation. Lowen has already relegated one club this season. His goals here against Derby consign them to the first division. Now Ipswich have to keep Owen at bay while hoping for a favour from Derby at Sunderland. Owen will be going to the World Cup this summer. Danny Murphy, maybe. He scored in front of Sven Joran Eriksson in Wednesday's win over Blackburn, but that still only made him 24th man in a 23-man squad. Matt Holland will be there this summer with Ireland. His last goal for Ipswich earned them their last away win on Merseyside. He got the winner at Everton. But today, Darren Bent, who could be playing in the European Under-19s Championship with England this July, has the heavy burden on his young shoulders of trying to ensure Ipswich's Premiership survival. If Ipswich are to stay in the Premiership, they will have to breach the best defence in that league. A mean rear guard that uncharacteristically leaked three goals in the win over Blackburn on Wednesday, as many as they conceded in their previous 13 Premiership matches. This being the last day of the season, it's synchronised as best as possible, a 
and it's Ipswich who kick off for what could be their last 90 minutes of Premiership football for some time. A win here, however surprising, might, however, just open the door to them staying at the top table. Certainly George Burley hopes so. And if they were to survive, they would do so at the expense of his former club Sunderland. But they would have to lose to Derby. And we will, of course, be keeping in touch with the other relevant games. Here's Michael Owen looking to combine with Heskey. And McGreal gets it to safety with Boyson. I think the first thing that springs to mind, Rob, is the fact that Ipswich must score this afternoon. Liverpool have been consistent scorers here at Anfield. It's going to be very, very difficult for Ipswich if they don't score this afternoon because you can more or less guarantee Liverpool will. It's a brilliantly sunny afternoon. The pitch, which has been heavily watered, is in excellent condition for this late stage of the season. And here's Marcus Bent. Now Royce, who's come in from the left. Tackle was by her man. Herbert Horidison to Matt Holland. Royce is clipped by Oblik Xavier. He's only started two of the last five Premiership matches. I think we can safely say that's the, the first foul of the game, Rob. Quite a rash challenge there from Xavier. Royce close to the free kick. Mark Venus useful with his left foot as well. Sammy Huppier with a header behind. And the first corner of the game in the second minute of the match. And Mark Venus coming all the way across to take it as well. Very cultured left foot. I think this is a vital area of the game, actually, uh, as far as Ipswich is concerned, set pieces. And why they're so glad to have Venus back in after his recent absence with a, a groin injury. Marcus Bent was trying to get there. It was Carragher who cleared it. It's Clapham. Cut away by Sammy Hupia. Liverpool have let in just 30 goals in the league this season at the start of this match. That was three fewer than the champions Arsenal. Darren Bent, what a big day it is for him. Tackle by Holland on Murphy. Jamie Carragher, who was playing right back against Blackburn in the week. It's Miller's header. Now Stefan Olsho. Gerrard. Heskey's layoff. And across goes Horidison. Gerrard looking for Murphy. Header away is by John McGreal. Now Marcus Bent. Challenged by Haman. I think we can see straight away, Rob, that it's, it's more likely to be Stephen Gerrard that pushes onto the right hand side than Danny Murphy. Oh, it had bent his run, but uh, hadn't quite managed to stay onside. Well, there have been steady seasons of progress under Gerard Houllier. Liverpool have finished seventh, fourth, and third, if they finish second this year, as they hope to, there'll be one more improvement to make next season. There's been so many false dawns for Liverpool in recent years, as they look to regain the championship winning habit that was such a feature in the 70s and 80s here. Danny Murphy. who was relegated in his only previous spell in the Premiership with Norwich and that included a, a 2-1 defeat by Liverpool in the run-in Papier's kick aimed in Steven Gerrard's direction 
Murphy. This is Michael Owen. The man switches it to Carrigan. Real getting the better of Heskey, looking for Marcus Bent. Darren Bent is up ahead, but trying to stay on side. And he's won it back well from Osho. Clapham. Miller. Clapham's ball in, looking to locate Royce. It was Xavier who got in front of it. I think that's one of the reasons, Rob, why we see Darren Bent out front today instead of Armstrong or Marcus Stewart, is the fact that he probably got a bit of extra pace. Uh, he's a very pacey young man, I'm sure they'll be looking to get at the back of Liverpool. Here's John Arisa cutting inside well and hitting his effort against John McGreal. Carragher. Arisa once more being forced out wide by Bramble, who plays it against him. Titus Bramble, who's due to have an ankle operation this summer. Been playing through that injury in an unfamiliar role of uh, right back in the last few games. Nothing too serious, we hope. Uh, I hate to hear that young men have to have operations at uh, the start of their careers. Rubble has been filling in admirably in the absence of Chris Makin. Played over the top by Clapham. Jamie Carragher, who's also uh, possibly looking at a summer of surgery after his exclusion from the uh, England World Cup squad. He's flying off to America on Monday to see a specialist about his knee injury. Here's Marcus Bent. Away by Danny Murphy. They've settled down quite well at Twitch, Rob. They're actually trying to play the ball around. That's their trademark. They love to play their football. And on this uh, wonderful playing surface here at Anfield, I'm sure I will see a good game of football this afternoon. Ipswich have only ever won twice at Anfield, and happily for them, their last two visits. 17 months ago, a Marcus Stewart goal was enough. And in January 1995, another success with a, a winner from Adam Tanner. Both of those Ipswich victories under the management of George Burley. Herman Horinerson, now Matt Holland. This is Murphy. Teresa. Worked through almost for Owen, but it was well read by John McGreal. That's the great thing about Michael Owen. When any midfield player gets time and space on the ball, they can get their head up. You can bet your bottom dollar that Michael Owen will give him a good run, and uh, he's absolutely exceptional. The Horidus Royce. Herman Horidison again. It's come off. And Xavier for the corner. Xavier, who scored on his Liverpool debut against Ipswich, the 6-0 defeat that so badly wounded Ipswich's survival campaign. And a real mission to avenge that today. Royce's corner. Marcus Benz gets underneath it. Excellent delivery here from Martin Royce. Good movement from Marcus Benz, but just can't get it down. I think it was Jamie Carragher picking him up. Was uh, was second second best there. Marcus Bent will be the main hope for an Ipswich goal. He's gone his last five games without scoring. Just into double figures for this season. Risa. Bramble. Now Miller. Solana Risa, who's been a revelation for Liverpool in his first season with the club. Gerard Hamann. Michael Owen. Somebody's got forward in support. Horizon goes out to him late. Mark Heskey was waiting, but a reliant there on the handling of Marshall. It wasn't actually a bad ball, Rob. It's a good ball across the near post, but Emil decides to run straight. If he'd, have, I'm sure, if he'd have gone across the front of uh, Marshall, he'd have had a better opportunity to put it in the back of the net. Now coming under pressure. Only Sammy Hippier. Carragher away to Clapham Miller broken up by Herman Ryderson back to Holland 
He also wanted it played early. Here's Bramble. And Miller. They're a little short on that right hand side then as Clapham had stayed out on the left. Heskey. Murphy. Jamie Carragher. This is Owen. Murphy. Carragher. As patient as ever, Rob. Patient as ever. Just waiting for that opening to appear, but it, uh, that one's gone a little bit long. But nevertheless, that was good. Liverpool. It's patience that's uh, rewarded Gerard Houllier's team well this season, particularly on their recent uh, phenomenal winning run. They've won eight of the last nine, and you think back to um, certainly like the Chelsea one here, where they were very patient, didn't get the breakthrough until very late on in the game when Vladimir Schmitzer came on and won it for them. And second best for long periods of that game as well. And, uh, they certainly did have patience out there, and a great goal to win it as well. And even though it's been a traumatic season in some senses for the club with Julio's long absence through illness, he has uh, constantly praised the character of his side, and that grittiness was certainly on show here against Blackburn in the week when three times they led, three times they were pegged back, and yet still they won it through that man, Emil Heskey. It's against Danny Murphy by Marshall. Venus gets it away. Carragher. Murphy again. Holland in pursuit of him. There's Hamann. Now Xavier. Oh, lovely step over Risa! An intelligent step over by Owen. And John finishes with a bullet of a shot Liverpool in control of the battle for second place and Ipswich really up against it now what a fantastic goal it was just patient football once again as the ball's fed in here from Xavier as you quite rightly state Rob wonderfully stepped over there from Mike Lone. and I just think it's sheer pace from Risa that beats Andy Marshall in goal there we see it outside the left foot yep straight over the top of him just sheer pace he can whack a ball this guy Delight for Gerard Millier. The breakthrough has come earlier than even he may have anticipated. Oh, I think for periods of the first opening uh, 10 minutes or so, Rob, I think they've been second best. I think Ipswich have actually passed the ball around a little bit better, but that is Liverpool. They do have this power up front. A glum expression from George Burley. And the frown would increase if he was to be aware of the fact that Liverpool have never lost when John Arnorisa has scored. Royce here looking for the cross towards Marcus Bent that doesn't reach him. I'm sure the Stadium of Light has erupted as well, Rob, I've got to say. Indeed. So the two Sunderland nerves will have been settled, I'm sure. Murphy's tackle on Bramble. Now Heskey. Danny Murphy. Flag up for offside. A little bit later, it has to be said, against Michael Owen. But I think justifiably, Rob, I think he was offside. No, he wasn't. I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> and that proves why assistant exactly. referees have such a difficult job. They have a tough task. Here's Holland. Bramble. Now John McGreal to Venus. Clapper. Royce up. He took a deflection on its way through. A crescendo of noise here at Anfield. Just as Sunderland's spirits have been lifted, I'm sure Manchester United's have been dampened. Gary McAllister. I'm sure he will rely on Liverpool establishing a good lead if he is to get an emotional farewell here. There'll be no 
sentimentality on Gerard Houllier's part if he does send him on he'll want Liverpool to be in a comfortable position where the match is already sewn up what a great signing he's been as well uh, Gary really has served Liverpool in his short period here in fantastic fashion and uh, I'm sure we wish him all the best in his new post as a Coventry manager a really fantastic professional and he may here be getting his uh, first scouting mission against opponents he'll be facing in the nationwide league next season because at the moment that is where Ipswich are heading and Heskey here could push them even closer cleared by Venus Here's Carragher. I just hope he stops playing now, Rob, because we've got to play against him next year. <laughs> I think he said actually he is going to Swine. play for the first year. How dare he? Hupia. Royce. Horidison. He's away from Gerrard. Looks to pull it back for Miller, but it doesn't reach him. McGreal. Royce aiming to put Bent through. It's Darren Bent. Sees Horidison. Marcus Bent still waiting in the middle. Cleared by Risa. Danny Murphy away. Here's her man. Murphy. John Arnorisa. A man. Owen. There's Xavier. Stephen Gerrard. Murphy. Carragher. This is Heskey. And the man. Murphy holding off Venus. Challenged by Royce. Clapham. And getting in tight and uh, catching Jamie Clapham. That's the other side of the game. Here we see Haman, who we don't really associate with getting really tight to people, doing a, a really good job there in midfield for Liverpool. The thing with them, they do have marvellous talent, but my word, do they work hard. Thank you. Sliding in on Darren Bent. George Burley has left himself with plenty of alternative striking options on the bench. As Clapham here looks to pull it across. But just how soon might he be tempted into a change before the situation becomes irretrievable? Marcus Stewart and Alan Armstrong there. I think he'd be quite happy in actual fact, Rob, the way the game has started. It's which have been, been in the game. Two corner kicks they've had, and they've been uh, in that Liverpool half a considerable amount of time but unfortunately without creating that chance here's Marcus Bent Holland Jamie Clapham pulled across by Clapham here's a chance oh and it's held the right side of the line Darren Bent's effort Dudek holds on it's a brilliant ball in from Jamie Clapham and, and young Darren Bent, I think it is on the far post, but what a save from Dudek, gets down so fast to make that save. Young Darren Bent with his head in his hands there, very unfortunate indeed, but a, a fantastic opportunity for Ipswich. It was a rare mistake by Jersey Dudek here, certainly for one of the Blackburn goals from uh, Andy Cole in the week, but he's been a very reliable goalkeeper. For Liverpool this season, despite the initial controversy over the uh, departure of Sander Westerveld, who did uh, so much in Liverpool's treble trophy winning season of last year.
It really does count, no matter what level of football you play. If you are solid at the back, as Liverpool have been this year, you're always going to have a chance of winning football matches, especially with the likes of Michael Owen and Emil Heskey up front. Uh, it's proven over the years that if you keep clean sheets, you will win football matches. Bad news tends to come in threes. It's certainly come in twos for Ipswich, a goal down. And at the Stadium of Light, Sunderland, a goal up. Kevin Phillips, who else, has scored it after 17 minutes. So neither situation at the moment going Ipswich's way. Clapper. Risa. Stefan Olsho with a header clear. Good work from Titus Bramble, though, really pushing, pushing John Arnorisa back into onto his own goal line and just couldn't get that away. Here's Bramble. Not a good day for George Burley so far. You can almost see, actually, in actual fact, a little bit of confidence draining out of Ipswich now. They, uh, they realise that they are, have got a, an uphill task. And please God, they haven't heard that result from, from the stadium alike, because that would be a double play. As it stands then, Ipswich would be down with Derby and Leicester. Sunderland would actually leapfrog Bolton. George Burley, I'm sure, came prepared for the worst, but hoping for the best. The computer, the it's the sorry, uh, gloomy scenario. No, the computer did them no favours, did they, to play Manchester United at home and, and Liverpool at Anfield on the last game of the season is uh, a terrible, terrible fixture list. Now, he was hoping he was going to be safe about a month and a half ago, one would have thought. Their other hope might have been that Liverpool had nothing to play for, but there is very definitely a big incentive for Liverpool, not only finishing ahead of their great rivals Manchester United, but also ensuring that they don't have to pre-qualify for the Champions League. Marcus Bent going in there to challenge with Sammy Huppier. Liverpool do it, it would be the first time that Manchester United have finished outside the Premiership's top two. Well, that's not bad, is it? That is not bad. And they're probably distraught that they'll, they'll finish that. Indeed, it's a season in which they'll have ended without a trophy, and uh, by their standards, that's a crisis. Absolutely. Here's Stefan Olsho. There's Horidison. Look on by Marcus Pett. Flag up for offside. There's Xavier. Resisting uh, Royce's challenge, only to find Herman Horidison there. He's won the free kick. Mark Venus, the club's player of the year. John McGreal, born on Merseyside, brought up a Liverpool fan, hoping for a triumphant visit to Anfield, as his only previous one was. But so far, it is not his or Ipswich's afternoon. A reminder of the football action we've got to come for you on Sky tomorrow at noon, the FA Umbro Trophy Final, it's Stevenage against Yeovil, Sky Sports 1 from noon, and then on Monday at 7.30, at the uh, culmination of this busy and successful weekend for Arsenal a chance to pay tribute to Tony Adams with his testimonial match, Arsenal against Celtic Monday at 7.30 on Sky Sports 1 Wouldn't it be nice to see that as a league fixture <laughs> Arsenal Celtic, fantastic 
You're lobbying for them to join, are you? I am, yes. And the blue half, of course. Here's Heskey. There's Hamar. Murphy. Oh, we're linking up with Xavier. by Horidison. It's Gerard, Murphy. Gerard helps it through. He's actually found there on Danny Murphy in the build-up and uh, Steve Dunn did well from Liverpool's point of view to allow the advantage. Horidison. Real away, Risa again. That's excellent support play from Risa. He's made up a lot of ground there. Danny Murphy trying the long cross field ball. Just drops a tad short. John McGrill heads it away, and there's uh, John Arna Risa following up and couldn't quite keep the half volley down. Risa has got the one goal that Liverpool have managed so far in the 13th minute of the game. Only the second one he scored here. The other one was against Manchester United in November. Could well keep Liverpool ahead of Manchester United in that second place in the Premiership table. Bramble looks for Marcus Bent or Royster with a cross. Between them, though, is Xavier. Riders. Martin Royster. He's appealing for a handball there against Stefan Olsho. This is a lovely little pass. Getting around the back of Steven Gerrard. He might have a point. Stefan Olsho, you might remember last season, got away with a, a handball in the FA Cup final, and the referee that day was the same ref as today, Steve Dunn. So maybe he's locked in again. That's interesting, huh? Bramble forward for the corner. Royce, the corner taker, but uh, doesn't clear the first man. It's Steven Gerrard. Gerard looking to locate Michael Owen this time. He'll have to do it on his own. Risa has got forward in support now as the shot is blocked by Holland. I would have to say you probably won't see a better pass than that all season. I know it's the last day of the season, but that pass from Steven Gerrard uh, required everything. Technique, power, the lot, accuracy. Brilliant pass on the half shot. Marcus Bent. Jamie Clapham. Marcus Bent again, header away by Hupia. Here's McGreal. Now Miller. Venus away from Owen. Bramble. Now Darren Bent. Clapham. Bramble. There's McGreal. Bramble. Well, was that a handball a few moments ago by Stefan Olsho? I think it's very difficult to tell, actually, this Rob, um, even in hindsight and, and the, the possibility of watching it on. I don't know whether it comes off his shoulder or his arm, I can't really see, to be perfectly honest. But it was close. He might have got it at Ipswich, but they're never going to get it in front of a cop, one would have thought. And certainly the cross was coming with uh, such force, he might have had his arm there in self-defence and seemed to be in the process of turning his head away. I think given the time and space that Martin Royce had, he should have eliminated him anyway. He had a lot of time, a lot of space to get his head up and have a little look where he could have put it. And unfortunately he hit the first defender. A crime at this level.
Well, is this the third snag to hit uh, George Burley? His team are trailing. Sunderland are beating Derby, and now there's an injury to John McGreal. Coming threes. It would be a blow as well, because John started the game in, in fine fashion. Well, this is the match to be at today, and uh, in the celebrity audience, one Chris de Berg and a former hero in red, Kenny Dalgleish. Sporting a rather natty haircut there, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Be a big blow to it, switch as they lost John McGrill. He's actually started the game well. Switch of uh, temporarily reorganised with Bramble going in alongside Mark Venus and Clapham just slotting in at right back for the time being. But McGrill has promptly returned. Marcus Bent now Miller away by Stefan Olsha. This is Mark Venus who was relegated from the top division with Leicester back in 1987. It took him 13 years to get back to the top flight, and it may be all about to end again after two seasons in the Premiership for Ipswich. A sad decline it will be after they made the top five last year and gave us so much enjoyment along the way some of the football was uh, quite exquisite here's Miller now McGreal this is Risa Holland seems a slight concern on the bench at the moment about the movement of Steven Gerrard and at this sensitive stage of the season it's not only concerned for Liverpool but for England as well Vladimir Schmitz are getting ready just in case and Gerrard is going to come off well, you'd have to say that Gerrard Hulo is doing Sven uh, one hell of a favour as well obviously a game that Liverpool are desperate to win and taking off such a talent as Steven, Steven Gerrard let's hope it's nothing too serious just a precaution so Vladimir Schmitzer, who scored his last two goals after coming on as a substitute here against Charlton and Chelsea, comes on to take the place of Steven Gerrard. Not a bad replacement, though. Here they are. They do have a fantastic squad now, Liverpool. Royce up. And Marcus Bent takes it on board, Carragher gets across in front of him, and the support there as well from Onsho. Good defending by Liverpool. Excellent cover in there from Jamie Carragher, coming in from left full-back to start, stop Marcus Bent. I thought he was clean in on goal, but uh, a terrific challenge. Here's Clapham. Titus Bramble. Away by Onsho to Risa. Again, that's not the worst ball in the world, that. That's put in a very, very dangerous area, but Marcus Bent was standing still, and no one really moving to get off the floor. Miller. They need to be attacking those crosses when they're coming in. Here's John McGreal. Now Clapham. Ariderson. Uh, losing out to Xavier. More worries here for Ipswich with Schmitzer bearing down on them and Heskey moving up ahead. Let him go all the way on his own. It's broken to Risa! Two for Liverpool! Two for Risa! And how glad he is that Steve don't play the advantage when Schmitzer went down. Another rocket of a finish. And surely now which condemned to the first division. First and foremost, great refereeing from Steve Dunn, I'd have to say. I thought Smeetia should have played Heskin. Brilliant run from Heskey, but we see him keep hold of it, and there's that follow-up play once again. What a shot. That went like a rocket. This young man really can hit a ball. Here we see it once again, right across the face of Andy Marshall. No chance whatsoever. That's gone past him in the back of the net before he's hit the floor. I think you can see the delight in Gerald Houdier's face. 
What a finish. What a signing John Arisa has been. He really has been a wonderful signing. He's also that left fullback. And then he fills in so wonderfully well down that left-hand side as well. But, uh, yeah, full of energy. A very talented young man. And the goals have been a bonus. Eight of them now this season for Risa. What I like about him, Rob, when every, anything goes forward, as far as Liverpool are concerned, he's always pushing up behind the ball and giving an option for somebody. And he's, he's done ever so well today. Following up there, that looked a, a run that would leave him behind. But it didn't. He was there. It was a great finish. Now Schmitzer again. He's got away from Venus and Owens up there in support, but Ryderson's is back to cut it out. Probably when he didn't need to pass, he chose to pass. And on the one before where I thought he should have passed, he decided to run. So, uh, Vladimir's in, in knocks at the moment. But two superb pieces of action from him. Yeah, it's quite an instant impact. You wonder just how negative the uh, reaction would be to the loss of uh, Steven Gerrard. And yet, Schmitzer has come on. Has uh, produced the move that led to the second goal. Yeah, possibly a more natural right-sided player as well, which will we'll give him an upper hand on, on Stephen Gerrard. Uh, it looked as if Xavier was the one doing most of the forward play down the right-hand side. But now they've got the more natural guy on, they should be feeling a lot better. Danny Murphy. This is Michael Owen. Can he get the better of McGreal? Brown will go back and make the crucial tackle. They're looking threatening now, Liverpool, on every attack they make. That was Michael Owen uh, with a great little bit of skill there, but good defending there from Titus Bramble. There's Venus. Herman Horidison. Royce looks to get in behind Xavier. He's got inside him, certainly. Oh! against the woodwork. Oh, that was brilliant football. Brilliant football there from Royce. Very, very unfortunate. And I think George is probably sitting down there thinking that just about sums our season up. He does ever so well here, turning inside Xavier. Or oh, using his eyes on Dudek as well. Goes to put it in the far side, but drags it across into the near side. Dudek had no chance, but uh, one would have thought that's it for Ipswich. Was the man who got the decisive goal for George Burley's side when they won the playoff final at Wembley against Barnsley? It was an eventual promotion after all the heartaches of missing out in three previous semi finals. But having worked so hard to get here, it looks as though after two years their adventure in the Premiership is about to be brought to a swift conclusion. Mark Venus. Royce again. Royce. Yes, he does. He, I think he just prefers his right side to his left-hand side. But uh, nevertheless, he's attempting to go both ways, down the line and come inside. Fabian Wilness set to come on. George Burley's hand forced in terms of his first substitution because John McGreal has not recovered from the injury he suffered earlier on. No real problem to them, Rob. Wilmers will just slot in at right full back and Titus Brown will just push across and play a uh, double centre half there with Mark Venus. Wilmers, who, like um, Titus Bramble is also facing some of surgery, a groin operation prospect for Wilmers. Before John McGreal. Here's her man. Danny Murphy. Vladimir Schmitter. Free kick given against Ben Holland. Clapham. Carragher. Schmitzer. Murphy. Anticipated by Stephen 
Shield. Is there a little issue for Faber to get that? That's what it's all about. What a professional, what a challenge that was. 2-0 uh, up and coasting, really, Liverpool. And that was one hell of a challenge there from Honcho. Danny Murphy. Fabian Wilmers is headed away. Michael Owen. We have a message from Michael Doyle in the paddock to make himself known to the nearest steward, please. Michael Doyle in the paddock, contact the nearest steward. Well, in spite of the fact they find themselves two down, Ipswich have had the majority of the possession, but that is uh, the one bright spot on a, an afternoon that is turning into yet another major disappointment for George Burley. Absolutely, we know they can keep the ball, we know they're really good at keeping possession of the ball, but it's, it's actually making those chances and, and converting them. Venus with the uh, free kick. And it took them five years to get into the uh, Premiership and so much heartache along the way that it will be a bitter pill for them to swallow going back down again they've always stuck to their principles though Robert, as far as football is concerned they get the ball on the floor and they try to pass it and uh, I've always felt that's the way to play the game and you know please God they, they play that that same way next year albeit in the first division and uh, I'm sure we'll see a very buoyant Ipswich next year well, it would be Ipswich's shortest ever stay in the top flight a disappointment that would uh, coincide with the 40th anniversary of their only ever league championship victory under Alf Ramsey in 1962 and 20 years after they finished the runners-up in the top division to Liverpool. Here's her man. Emil Heskey. Holland. In fact, the injury to John McGrew has actually stuck Titus Bramble back into his proper position and already he looks far more comfortable at centre half. He's got tremendous pace and I'm sure that'll be a nice little contest now between him and Michael Owen and Daniel Haskell. Here's Miller. Here's Marcus Bent. Wilness. Clapham. Xavier's header away, Schmitzer helps it on to Dietmar Haman. Now Schmitzer. Tackle was by Royce. So Schmitzer on, of course, because Steven Gerrard's gone off. Let's find out about that injury from our reporter Dave Jones. Yes, the news on Steven Gerrard, obviously a worry. Uh, he, was, he came off basically because he was suffering tightness in the right-hand side of his groin, which has troubled him throughout this season. He's in there now, having ice on the groin but at the moment it's just a concern it's just a worry it's not a pull it's just tightness thanks Dave Steven Gerrard one of the uh, three Liverpool starters today named in the World Cup squad Danny Murphy is well there on standby that's a shame for young Steven I've, I've got a horrible feeling about the, the footwear of today Rob I've got to say that a lot of players wear these blades and they don't actually get into the floor uh, as, as well as studs do and they seem to slide across the top of it now whether that's causing groin problems hamstring problems I don't know but you can't beat a good old stud Marcus Bent Darren Bent away by Xavier Miller and Darren Bent had suddenly found himself some room and time and he's pulled it back to Marcus Bent and Clapham gets his shot all wrong and what a shame it wasn't on his left side because Jamie Clapham would surely have hit the target there this is a little bit of a swinger he's got it's a great run there from young Darren Bent he finds himself into the penalty area does well again gets the ball back across Marcus Bent with great vision unfortunately it fell on Jamie's swinger and wide of uh, Dudek's 
right hand post. Two extra minutes in the first half. Oh, bad kick by Dudek straight to Darren Bent. He's got support coming. But it doesn't reach Marcus Bent. Onsho sees to that. A rare slip by Dudek. Putting his team under pressure. Royce up. Beyond Marcus Bent, Carragher's header away. Risa getting away from Wilness. Bramble. Jamie Clapham. Miller. Wilness. Here's Holland. Darren Bent. Now Heskey. Ryderson. Tommy Miller. Wilness. Clapham. Away by Sonny Hippier. Husky clipped by Wilmers, but the referee has again played a good advantage there. And it's Danny Murphy. Goes for a clever chip over Marshall. And there was a bit of anxiety there from the goalkeeper as he walks it over. Another good run there from Michael Owen and Danny decided to miss him out. Emil Heskey doing exceptionally well here and Stephen Dunn, I've got to say. Excellent referee. And here we see Michael Owen once again, a lovely little diagonal run. But Danny Murphy opting to go for the chip. Halfway along the road to the First Division, George Burley's team trailing to two first half goals from John Arnorisa as Liverpool close in on runners up spot in the Premiership. Liverpool 2, Ipswich 0 at the break. 17 seconds. To that and there it is one and two touch football Michael Owen with a great awareness now just goes over the top of that pass from Xavier and look at that he really does have a shot on him this guy here we see him takes it with the outside of his left foot but it's past Andy Marshall before he can move absolutely fantastic the one worry really for Liverpool in that first half was the loss of Steven Gerrard with which we uh, understand is a groin injury yeah. but of course the man who came on to replace him Vladimir Schmitz had a big part to play in the second goal well it gave them a more natural right-sided player as well Rob and uh, Smisa was really instrumental in this one. He picks the ball up in his own half. It's a fantastic run. Going past two, one or two, two, two or three players. This run from Heskey, I thought he should have played him in personally. But he gets a little bit of luck there. But this strike from Risa is absolutely magnificent. He hits it like a rocket. He should have played it now for me, for Emil Heskey. He doesn't. Gets a lucky break. Risa following up. And it's just an unbelievable strike. Well, that is fantastic stuff there. Well, you mentioned Luck and uh, Ipswich haven't really had a great deal of it in that first half. They've had a lot of possession, but yeah. their chances really have been at a, at a premium. Well, you, you... Town, who are looking perhaps for the sort of revival that Everton, you'll remember, had back in 1994 when they seemed down, out and doomed when they were trailing to Wimbledon 2-0 and yet somehow manufactured a comeback to win it 3-2. But if Ipswich were, by some miracle, to do exactly the same, they would still be relying on events elsewhere and a derby comeback at the Stadium of Light. It does look a bridge too far for Ipswich Town, who at the moment can look forward to life in the First Division next season. As for Liverpool, it looks as though their season next year may not be as long. They started this season on the 8th of August when they had to pre-qualify in the Champions League with a game against FC Hacker. This is their 59th game of this season. But next year, it looks as though they'll be going straight into the group stages of the Champions League for the first time. Up or down for Ipswich, sadly, it looks like being down. And it's Liverpool who are on the up again to continue their steady progress 
under Gerard Houllier, and it was his acquisition this season in John Arnarisa, whose two goals have established the lead that Liverpool hold in this match. If Liverpool do hold on to win, and there's no suggestion that they won't, it'll be the first time in seven years that the top two have finished with 80 points or more. And such was Arsenal's run-in to the season that the defeat by Tottenham wasn't as costly as it might have been, because even if Liverpool had won that game, Arsenal would still have been out of their reach today. But Liverpool it is who get the second half on the way, looking to end the season on a high here and to secure for themselves second place in the table. Be a sad occasion for George Burley, who took over too late to rescue Ipswich from Premiership relegation back in 1995. It was actually the third relegation he'd suffered in the uh, English League. One of the others was with Sunderland, ironically. Bramble missing his kick. that Ipswich will be in Division 1 next season. It's a never-say-die attitude, though, from Michael Owen. This ball comes forward, and Titus Bramble really does have this under control. It's a bad miss kick, but then Michael just carries on running. He just carries on and hopes that Titus Bramble will make a mistake. He does make the mistake, Andy Marshall with no chance. That's a, that's a good goal-scorer's goal there from Michael. Excellent. Good news for England as well. Razor sharp, Michael Owen completes his best scoring season in the Premiership. It's his 19th league goal of the campaign, which is a personal best. I think he's looked sharp today, Rob, I've got to say, even in the first half. He made some really terrific runs off the ball and uh, a little bit unfortunate he didn't get in in the first half, but that was a good striker's goal. Marcus Bent. Sammy Hupia. Jamie Carragher, Clapper, Fabian Wilders, Clapham again, Ryderson, Venus, Miller, Titus Bramble, this again. Tottenham are just holding off Rosa. He's done well with his persistence and has kept it in, but will it yield anything for Ipswich? Clapham. Rosa once more, but this time he's offside. Yeah, just wandering offside, I think, Rob, and Jamie Clapham probably taking one more touch on the ball that he didn't need to take. Royce has worked really hard down this back hand side, I've got to say. Never say down at the truth. And Marcus Bent giving a little tree up in the middle of the field. That's nice to see. Well, her work may be in vain because of Michael Owen's goal, which came within a minute of the restart and came so quickly that Gerard Houllier and Phil Thompson didn't even witness it. They were still returning to their positions. I was just thinking at the time when Titus Bramble made that mistake, Rob, how much more at ease in the centre of the defence he, he has looked since he's been there. And uh, unfortunately for the young man, it was a bit of, bit of a bad error. Well, he is a young player, still learning his costly mistakes in this Premiership season from Titus Bramble. But remember that even during their promotion campaigns in the lower divisions, he was by no means a regular. had uh, two seasons in the Premiership now to acclimatise and in a summer that is bound to include some restructuring and offloading of players Bramble is one of those who has actually been linked with a, a move elsewhere Newcastle reportedly interested in him but within 43 seconds of the restart it was that error from Titus Bramble that uh, presented Michael Owen with the opportunity that he gratefully snatched at, and uh, Liverpool now find themselves 3 0 up. Here's Bramble. 
uh, Venus. Nicely done. This is Xavier. A goal from Xavier that started the 6 0 route of Ipswich, by Liverpool at Portland Road. In the way Liverpool have started this second half, you do worry for Ipswich that there might be a, a similar sort of scoreline on the cards. And they show a tremendous professionalism, Liverpool work well. They haven't let up. They're still, still playing the one and two touch. They're still making great runs up front and they're still working hard off the ball. So uh, Ipswich have got it all to do. Uh, we saw Marcus play a couple of weeks ago against Manchester United at Portland Road and he did exceptionally well and I think he's done very well today I've got to say he tries to get hold of the ball here we see him holding it off a nice little bit of skill and Harman giving him a little whack on the on the ankle but he's straight up on his feet again nice to see he's got very very impressive Marcus Marcus Bent another player that Ipswich may have to back him to hold on to Tottenham uh, reportedly have him among their list of targets that's always the major problem Rob it, it's bad enough getting relegated but if, if for instance they were to keep this side together they might have half a chance of bouncing straight back but if unfortunately for financial reasons they have to keep chopping and changing the, the, the squad of players then they've got a problem here's Owen It's nice to see this young man looking as sharp he has today. He's, uh, he's really worked very hard. Probably taking just the wrong option there with uh, Haridasun, who's got a lot of pace himself, covering back. But nice to see him looking so positive. Michael Owen actually scored a couple in the victory at Ipswich in February, and it's uh, completed a unique achievement by him of having scored against every single club in this season's Premiership. He's completed a personal double over Ipswich and Liverpool well on their way to completing a league double over the men from Suffolk as well. Here's Risa. On the way to Holland. Now here's Darren Bent. Clapham. Roysa. Horidison. Sticking to his guns against him, but Horidison does this time get the better of him. Clapham's cross. Matt Holland. Yeah, good little passage of play from Mitfitch. Horidison realising that Haman probably doesn't have the strength and the pace to stay with him. Gets a little bit of luck, but cuts it back to Jamie Clapham who puts in a fantastic ball. This is a great ball. Young Darren Bent just missing out, and poor old Matty Holland just can't keep it down and get it on target. But a nice passage of play there from Mitfitch. Really, sorry Rob, they've really given it the gun, haven't they? They've, although, albeit they are three goals down, they are really trying to, to get something back. Good on them. Here's Horidison. Now Roysa. Now he's giving it away to Michael Owen. Heskey! Well, that just sums it up, doesn't it? It, it was a, a little bit of a toe poke there from Roy, so just trying to, trying to keep it in play for them. Michael puts it through the legs of Titus Brambourne and Mulheski just lifting it over the top, but a little bit of fortune as far as Liverpool are concerned. Probably across to Marshall and Mulheski. Not Ipswich's day, is it? Their touch is letting them down at the moment, and they're 
presenting a quality side like Liverpool with too many opportunities to come at them. Here's Heskey. Murphy. This is Xavier to Owen. And he gets caught by Martin Reusser. A bit of a silly challenge that well, we've got to say. Michael takes a good first touch. Just looks to nip in between two players. And Reusser with a plate and body check. Definite foul. Well, crowd detected the hint of cynicism there. The referee doesn't deem it punishable by the showing of a card. It's which have enough problems as it is. Well, the way he's lining up, Rob, I think he's going to have a shot here at least. Huh? Is he going to go for the hat trick? Blocked by Holland. Not his best. Here's flick on, cleared by Titus Bramble. Carragher, Hupia, Venus away, Murphy. Vladimir Schmitzer trying to get the better of Herman Hawaii, and he's through! And the substitute sets the seal on it. Vladimir Schmitzer ensures Liverpool of their best ever Premiership finish, second in the table. And consigns Ipswich to Division 1. He gets a little bit of luck as well. What he does do well, he's very positive. He attacks the Ryderson straight away. Gets a little bit of luck there and there, but it's a great finish. Andy Marshall, no chance at all. It was him, but he attacks the defender. This is what's good about Smeets' play. Gets a bit of luck on Venus, and that's a great finish with the outside of his right foot. No comeback now, I'm afraid, for Ipswich. There we see it once again. And poor old Mark Venus is just out of time there, unfortunately. Vladimir Smitsa, that's an excellent finish, I would have to say. Excellent. Gerard Houllier almost has a goal scoring guarantee, it seems, every time he sends on Vladimir Smitsa here. He sent him on in matches against Chelsea and Charlton here, he came up with the goods in terms of a goal. He was involved in a goal shortly after replacing Steven Gerrard in the first half, and now he's got one of his own. It's Liverpool 4, Ipswich 0, and Liverpool now. Coasting towards the end of the season and a glorious finish to it that will continue their steady improvement under Gerard Julien. On course now for their best home league victory since a 4 0 win over Arsenal in December 2000. Deep Mahanan. Heskey. Murphy. Well, this needs to be careful there against John Arisa. Well, I was just about to say, Rob, the impressive thing with Liverpool, they're not happy with four, they want five. I'm sure if they get five, they'll want six. They've been very, very professional in their work today. Very professional. They're still working really hard. They've got two banks of four there. It, it almost looks impregnable. It looks as if it's an impossibility for it to go through. They really do look a solid outfit. George Burley emerges from his uh, position and he gets uh, roundly jeered by the Liverpool fans here because of supposed comments he made into the build-up of this game where he claimed that Liverpool 
felt they were already assured of second place. There were comments that upset and annoyed Gerard Houllier, who said that the one thing he stamped out in for this club is any arrogance or conceitedness. And he'll certainly feel vindicated that his players have kept their focus from their performance here today. And Michael Owen is through looking for a, a fifth, but he's offside. This was another one of those great runs, though. Hoopier getting in on his left uh, his left foot. And we see Michael spin out. I don't think he is once again. That's fantastic timing. He's playing on the shoulders of defenders, and with his pace, it just looks as if he's 10, 15 y yards offside. But another fantastic run there for Michael Owen. Darren Bent. Here's Bramble. Harrison. assured of second place in the table Sunderland's safety also seems beyond question here's Michael Owen again but while Liverpool march on it looks as though Manchester United are set for their lowest ever finish in the Premiership of third but just how significant for the future of the Premiership could this Liverpool season be, I wonder? Arsene Wenger has talked about a, a shift of power, obviously concentrating towards North London from his point of view, but who, could there be a shift across the North West as well? I've got to say, next year's Premier League should be one hell of a league, because I think Liverpool have improved as the seasons have gone on, and uh, next season it's going to be one hell of a fight. Will this? I think they've got together now we're probably the best squad of players they've had for a long, long time, Liverpool. And I'm really ready now to, uh, to mount a massive challenge for the Premiership. Well, it's been built on a solid foundation, hasn't it? And no for, question. for any tinkering that Gerard Houllier does, he rarely disturbs his uh, back five unless pressed to. And the achievement they've had with the best Premiership defensive record this season has come in a season where Julio was away for a lot of the time and Phil Thompson must take some credit for that yeah. but also when they lost Marcus Babel early on with that very serious illness and had to cope with his loss and it is great to see Marcus on the way back as well thank uh, thank God but no they they have done exceptionally well they've shown a lot of character and that's something I think Gerard has instilled within the club also fighting back from his own personal illness it's given it's given the lads an extra bit of a spur and they really have worked very hard Super side. And Schmitzer. Holland. Arrives. Vladimir Schmitzer. Clap it. He's shown lovely ability today, Jamie Clapham. Very, very neat left foot, Jamie, whether he's been on the right side or left side. Really has shown a lot of quality. Up. Away by Stefan Onsho. Really, the only achievement left for Ipswich, it seems, is to uh, score what will be the last goal of their current Premiership tenure. They are a well run club, and you can bet that uh, they've already counted the cost of relegation and have made their plans about cost-cutting and overhauling the playing staff. Xavier clears. The one thing you can be sure David Sheepshanks won't do is uh, press the panic button and sack the manager, which is the usual knee-jerk reaction after relegation for George Burley. Should still be in a job next season if he chooses to be with Ipswich. And I think we can safely say that everyone at Ipswich has played their part in getting together a wonderful football club. 
Monsters corner. Headed away by Sammy Huppier. Risa clears. Wilness gives away the free kick for a little pull at Owen. Jersey Dudek, who lost on his debut against Aston Villa, but it's one of only five defeats he's suffered in this Premiership season. Schmitz returns. Schmitz. Here's Michael Owen. This away. It's a great turn, one now on the edge of the box. He was a little bit unfortunate that the power of Titus Bramble just nudged Michael off the ball there, but uh, excellent football once again from Liverpool. Header back by Deep Mahaman. He does a great job. He sits in front of that back four and he just he just covers them and he gives them a bit of a cover from the front and works tirelessly. A good pass through the ball. Nothing spectacular, but uh, very good for the team effort. Of course, the season doesn't end here for Herman, who'll be in the German World Cup squad, or for Owen and Heskey, who'll be with England, and Dudek, who should be there with Poland. This is Risa. Herman. Xavier. Murphy. Martin Royce Darren Bent Darren Hupier. It's been a tough afternoon for young Darren Bent he's, uh, he's worked tirelessly but whenever he seems to recede the boy's got one of those big lumps in, in Hupio or Hencho right up his backside and it's been very very difficult for him he has tried to work the channels as has Marcus Bent uh, but it's been a tough afternoon for the young man Bramble, which was uh, confident, bearing in mind that one error of his already has led to a Liverpool goal. I think he was going to make sure there, Rob, that it got <laughs> there, wasn't it? I don't really actually think it was the header that was the mistake. It was missing the volley was the mistake, the first one. You never let the ball bounce as a centre-half. He tried to play out in the volley, took his eye off it, and that was the error. It wasn't so much the header. I know it was the, the final straw, but it was definitely the missed volley that caused the goal. Holland. Now Horidison. Holland will be too into short ball for this game. He must have covered every blade of grass on the pitch. The prize open the Liverpool defence now for Darren Bent. Savvy is in the way there for the corner. Still no way through. They all cover each other. So one goes out to meet the ball, the other three cover around the back. And they make it very, very difficult for you. Well, it may be too late for Marcus Stewart to have a real impact on Ipswich's fortunes in this game, but at least he can finish his own season off on a high, a season that was so badly disrupted by injury as he comes on to take the place of Darren Bent, who's very much one for the future. And I think we can safely say the lack of Marcus Stewart's performances, uh, or so say appearances, have really cost Ipswich dear. He scored goal after goal last season. I'm sure he would have done the same this year. So. Stewart, number 11, number 18, Stewart, who scored Ipswich's winner here last season. Marcus Bent, and off the line by Carragher. Wilness. Murphy. Schmitzer. Heskey. Carragher.
There's the benefit of having two guys on the post. Holland was trying to play back for Stewart. Clear to Murphy. Holland again doing the retrieval job. Hupia. Flick on by Heskey. Venus subdues the threat of Michael Owen. Here's Heskey. Reflection carries it through here to Michael Owen. Heskey! My word, they've worked well together, Rob, this afternoon. Michael Owen has been lethal. He's moving off the ball once again. There is movement. Great little run. That's a nice little deflection there, and here he tries to pick out Emil to give him a goal. Or he might have gone to the back post there for Jean Arnaurisa. Pesky scored three times in his last couple of appearances against Ipswich. Look away here, now in a, a linking up at the moment, will give England great uh, cause for optimism for the summer ahead. Here's Marcus Bent. Clapham. Royce's flick on. Hope you're away. Holland looks to get it through, but not too much has got past Hope you're in all show today. There's Holland, Stewart, nobody there for him. This is Carragher. Risa. Villa. Marcus Bent. Pippia. Jamie Carragher, Owen. Murphy. Uh, Bramble. Marcus Bent looking to wrangle one through for Marcus Stewart. Uh, once again, Xavier good on the cover. It was a good effort there, but Marcus just doesn't have that pace that uh, young Durham Ben has, but a good effort. Bramble has to be careful here, and again he gets plenty back on the header. Unfortunately for him, Marshall keeps hold of it. I would have to say I think that's Andy Marshall's problem. He's come a little bit too fast off his line there. Here we see the ball coming through. It gets a little skid through. Here we see Titus doesn't deal with the first one, but Andy's just a bit too close to him. Should have stayed on his line and give Marcus that, uh, sorry, Titus Bramble that little bit of a gap to make her an error. Bramble again facing his own goalkeeper with Michael Owen lurking. And uh, with good reason to be nervous every time that that happens. Here's the man. In steps Mark Venus. And another goal in the game of significance at the Stadium of Life. The scoreline is now Sunderland 1, Derby 1. Marvin Robinson equalising after 68 minutes to cancel out Kevin Phillips' effort. And that will just about complete Ipswich's day of misery if Derby do go and win there and they find that uh, they've lost here so heavily. My word, it would. It would just about cap it, wouldn't it? Uh, once again, Marcus Bent doing some great work there for Ipswich on the right-hand side and winning a, a deserved free kick. Well, it looks as though any rescue acts would come too late now for Ipswich, but can they at least get the consolation of a goal Clapham's free kick. 
That's a shame because they've caused Liverpool a few problems from those sort of errors. They've done, done ever so well, but Jamie Clapham with a great left foot that he has just over hitting that one. Jamie Clapham, who was part of the team that came up through the playoffs, still one or two around from those days. Mark Venus, Matt Holland, Martin Royce, Fabian Wilness. And all now presiding over Ipswich's return from whence they came. Xavier. Uh, Heskey. This is Carragher. Heskey again. In comes Bramble. No handball as was appealed for. This is Stewart with Marcus Bent up ahead and Marcus Bent is through here. And the Jersey Dudex positive decision to come and claim it. Rewarded when he got there. That's nice, excellent goalkeeping. This is a cunning little pass here from Marcus Stewart. Just inside the fullback. Oh, that's good goalkeeping. He's out like a flash, he's due there. Felt he should have had a goal kick there. Corner given, though. Rumble challenge for it. It's broken to Matt Holland, who hooks it back in. Safely, Dudex. He runs off the season with just a little bit of showmanship as well. Stewart game plan on the edge. I think he was on side. He was on side. He goes through, and Dudek makes a fabulous save because Marcus Stewart picked his spot to his right hand side. Did he touch it? I don't even know whether he touched it, but uh, a corner's been given. Well, they're 4 0 up Liverpool, but Stefan Oncho and Sammy Hoppy have still berated the assistant referee. Cleared by Carragher to her man. Murphy and now Risa. Is he going to round off the afternoon with his hat trick? John Arna Risa. Maybe Murphy was better placed. I thought he had to go for the shot. He was on his good uh, good left side. I thought he was going to try and curl it around Danny Marshall into the far post. But Danny Murphy's worked tirelessly. That was a fabulous little bit of, bit of football from Danny Murphy. Come on. Here's Murphy. Heskey. Michael Owen. Great ball to Xavier. It's her man. Carragher. Danny Murphy. Owen. Miller gets it away. Only to Carragher though. Now her man. Xavier. Schmitzer. Teresa now in Teresa Liverpool tried to uh, finish on a bit of a, a party piece. Willness in the end broke it up. Would have been a Liverpool trademark. Wonderful pass in uh, the pivot being Haman in the middle of the field. Exceptional play, one and two touch. Nice to watch. Well, it looks as though Gerard Houllier might just give Gary McAllister the emotional farewell that he craves, and I'm sure 
the Liverpool supporters would uh, like to give him before he heads off to begin a new venture in management with his old club Coventry. He's ready to come on shortly. Here's Horidison. Cross looking for Marcus Bent. And away by Carragher. Marcus Bent. Royce's ball in. Royce was caught there, but yet again, Steve Dunn's played a good advantage. The eventual pass, though, is too long for Heskey. Marcus Bent. some sentimentality and Gary McAllister will come on to play his last game for the club before heading off to be manager at Highfield Road McAllister who's been such an astute signing on Gerard Houllier's part and from his own point of view has completed his set of domestic medals to come on to take the place of Danny Murphy Before that's staged, Marcus Bent is replaced by Alan Armstrong. But here comes the introduction the Liverpool fans have waited for. Gary McAllister on. We're at about ten more minutes to play for the club who served so well over these two seasons. What a lovely reception there for Gary McAllister. Danny Murphy, I'm sure, got a little piece of that as well, because he's had a fabulous game this afternoon. But it is nice that they should give Gary McAllister such a fa fabulous pro that sort of reception. Wonderful. Here's Xavier, the Schmitzer, Michael Owen. Here's McAllister. Cheer to the Raptors every time he gets a touch in this his last game for the club. Venus, a man. Risa, Carragher, Pippia. Owens lay off to Heskey. It's Michael Owen again. Waiting for McAllister to get forward. Gary McAllister. Well, that would really write a final glorious chapter to the story wouldn't it oh, that was great football that was great in the change there from emerald heskey and michael owen initially and then michael owen just waited for gary McAllister to make that run and slipped him a lovely little pass and gary couldn't uh, just couldn't put it in the back of the net but lovely football so i wonder who has the romantic ending in store will it be gary McAllister with a goal in his last appearance for the club or will it be a hat-trick for john arnorisa Riders. I'd love to see McAllister score, I've got to say. Uh, uh, Reese has got plenty of years in which to get that hat trick, Rob. Let's see a bit of romance. And looking for Michael Owen here. Bramble gets it back. Marshall saves the corner. My word, what a threat. I said, I said in the first half, as soon as someone looks up, he's got a bit of time and space, Michael makes a run. And that was another fantastic run. He's put defenders under constant pressure this afternoon. A fabulous performance from young Michael. Nicholas and Elke about to uh, come on. Abel Xavier is coming off. Just wonder as well if this might be Nicholas and Elke's last game for Liverpool. Gerard obviously doesn't feel that he's safe this afternoon, you know. And Elke, Heskey and Michael Owen up front, my <laughs> word. Not a bad threesome. I thought you normally put defenders on to shore it up and make sure you win. <laughs> He's going for the fifth.
Reese's throw. Miller makes it ahead of McAllister. Here's her man. Well, over in the end. Fell on his wrong side, actually, Rob. He tried to control it. The spin took it straight, and he had to swing on his left-hand side. Here we see it coming in once again. It falls straight to him on the volley. And it's on his wrong side, as you quite rightly state. If it was on his right side, he might have had a little gamble there. Clapham. Clapham. Here's Venus with a free kick. and met it a bit, un bit unfortunate Rob I've got to say they really have put some some good quality in Venus has got a lovely left foot swung that one into the far post but Herman just couldn't get over the top of it and power it down it hasn't been uh, George Burley's afternoon at all Sunderland getting an early breakthrough Ipswich conceding two first half goals and then letting in a third in the uh, freakish circumstances really within a minute of the restart I've got to say Robin on a more positive note for Ipswich if they can keep this team together next year in the first division they've got four strikers that can score goals the two Bents Armstrong and Stewart they will score goals in the first division there's no question whatsoever about it and I honestly believe if they can keep their side together you'll, you'll see Ipswich in, in the top flight of the first division no question and they certainly have a solid base of players there who know what it takes to get out of Division 1, having already done so previously. Risa. Now Anelka. Michael Owen. Looking for Anelka again! Nicholas Anelka, who wanted to round off the season with a goal to try and convince Gerard Millier to sign him permanently, has done just that. My word, we've also got a substitute midfield player. This pass from Michael Owen is quite superb. Gets himself turned outside of the right foot. A great run from Anelka. Sits Andy Marshall on his backside, picks his spot. Great goal. What a pass there from Michael Owen. Absolutely terrific. Great goal. Been an exhibition of football, I've got to say, Rob. They have really been absolutely superb. Initially, their hard work, then in comes their skill, and they're just pro their professionalism is, is quite outstanding. Well, they're close to an agreement with Paris Saint Germain for Anelka. It depends to a large degree, it seems, on his personal demands, which uh, may just have risen after that goal. Clapham's cross, Stewart. And there's not even going to be a consolation in it for Ipswich, it seems. No, there's not. It was a great ball in as well from uh, Jeremy Clapham there on his left foot. And poor old Marcus couldn't put it in the back of the net. Great shame for them. McAllister. Vladimir Schmitzer. It's come off Miller. And McAllister tries to get there but doesn't. Jamie Carragher. I think the crowd are just willing Gary McAllister to score. Here we see it's a lovely little ball through. And Gary thinking he's got all the time in the world to put it in the back of the net, but Titus Bramble had a, a great bit of cover in there. And Jamie Carragher following up once again on his swinger, blasting it over the top. Steven Gerrard, who was taken off in the first half with a groin problem. Holland. Clapham. Ipswich now will just be glad of the final whistle to end the agony. For many of their players, it'll be the first time they've experienced relegation. Fans have been through it before with this club seven years ago. Well, they enjoyed 
enjoyed the day out at Wembley and they'll be hoping for similar times back in the first division. But it's a sad demise coming as soon as it does after they finished fifth in the table, an achievement that saw George Burley pip treble trophy winning manager Gerard Houllier to the Manager of the Year award last year. There is one minute left of Ipswich Town's Premiership life. Here's Marcus Stewart. Jamie Clapper. Herman Horidison. Holland. Venus. Schmitzer. Beyond Owen's reach. Check on the watch by Steve Dunn. And Liverpool have secured their highest ever Premiership finish. Gerard Houllier's team runners up in the Premiership. Ipswich relegated from the top division after two years. They're back in the first division next season. Michael Owen at the start of the second half really killed off any hopes of Ipswich resistance. Gary McAllister signing off in a five-star and five-goal win for Liverpool that shows they are very much a coming force in the Premiership. Not quite able to take the title this year, but they've run Arsenal close. Ipswich back Ladies from whence men, they came. The, uh... They came here hoping and praying for a miracle that has not happened. It didn't look like happening early on when John Arnorisa established a two-goal lead for the home team and when Sunderland took an early lead against Derby anyway. Their hope was that Sunderland would slip up and that they could somehow conjure a victory here. But two for Risa and one each for Owen, Schmitzer and Anelka have ensured that Liverpool round off their season with a resounding victory. That's 11 goals against Ipswich this season without reply. And in their moment of despair, all credit to Mark Venus, who leads his players across to acknowledge the support they've had from the 3,000 or so that have made the trip from Suffolk. The Tractor boys have got to try and plough their way out of Division 1 again. It was so hard for them last time, it took them five years and many near misses to do it. But at least they've got the, the basis of that team still there and provided they, su they survive the restructures, at least they will have plenty of experience of how to get out of Division 1. Real disappointment for young and old alike amongst those who've come from Ipswich and it will be a long, miserable journey home for them. Although, in truth, they didn't lose their Premiership status on this day alone. There have been long spells, particularly at the start of the season, where they couldn't win a game, and which in the end have really cost them dear. But as for Liverpool, what will Manchester United and Arsenal make of them? They've had so many false storms before, but they really have made more of a fight this season and have pushed Arsenal and Manchester United close. Let's hear from the disappointed camp. Matt Holland is talking to Dave Jones. Matt, can you put into words the disappointment you're feeling right now? Oh, I just can't believe it really. You know, Liverpool were fantastic today. And to be fair, we had a lot of possession, just didn't create any goals. And just so disappointed. You think it, it summed up the season, the fact they're golfing class this afternoon? Yeah. The whole season's been a disappointment. We have to hold our hands up and say, individually and collectively, we haven't done enough. Hopefully next year we'll learn from these mistakes and come back stronger. You think yourself left yourself far too much to do with these three games in the final running? Uh, the first half of the season lets down. Twelve points at Christmas is not enough. So, how are you going to come back from this? Well, you know, obviously we're devastated at the moment. We'll, we'll look back and hopefully we'll learn from our mistakes. And next year, if we can keep everyone together, then hopefully we'll be a stronger side again. Thank your time, Matt. First relegation of Matt Holland's career, but he has to quickly pick himself up and. 
get ready for the important World Cup campaign ahead for the Republic of Ireland. But really, Ray Wilkins, I suppose that costly start to the season when they won only one of their first 17 games really in the end has done for Ipswich, hasn't it? Absolutely, Rob, yeah. You know, you can look back and say they had a, a horrible run in, and they did have a horrible run in, but at the start, if you're only winning one of those games in the 17, then you really do have a problem. Um, the Premier League is packed full of quality, and you have to be up there week in, week out to stand any chance at all. I've got to say, as I said before, Rob, if they can keep themselves together, um, I'm sure they can bounce straight back. Matty Holland, you see the disappointment Mr Ipswich he must be. He's a great character, a great professional, but now all of a sudden he has another hire to go to. He'll travel to Korea and Japan uh, with, uh, with Ireland. So it, it's a funny old game, this. Someone once said that, but football is a very, very strange game. When we talk about bad starts and you think back to August and September and Liverpool lost at Bolton and lost at home here to Aston Villa, people were writing them off then and really they showed tremendous character after that, didn't they, particularly in view of Gerard Houllier's illness as well? No question, absolutely. I'm looking around now and looking at the squad of players they've got actually parading around this pitch at the moment and that's as good as any in the Premier League. And I think next year will be one hell of a fight, I've got to say. Arsenal are quite superb at the moment. Manchester United will feel very hardly done by, or harshly done by. And I think next season we're in for one hell of a fight, I've got to say. You've got to put Leeds in there as well. You've got to put a lot of, lot of other people that will really fancy their chances. Newcastle have been superb. But can they compete with the likes of Liverpool, Man U and Arsenal? It's going to be a great Premier League. Liverpool's first automatic qualification for the group phase of the Champions League and it will leave Manchester United having to pre-qualify for the first time since 1999 although of course uh, significantly that was the year they won it England will be hoping that uh, Steven Gerrard can soon shrug off the effects of that uh, groin injury he picked up in the first half he's out there now with his teammates acknowledging this fantastic reception they're having. Yeah, we sincerely hope so because Stephen is a wonderful talent and I'm sure that he's going to be, especially on the major stage in the World Cup, he will be absolutely superb. I've got to say, Rob, if I had hair on the back of my neck, <laughs> it would be standing up at the moment because when they sing this, you'll never walk alone, this Liverpool crowd. It is something a little bit special, I've got to say. Well, we got so used to Liverpool dominating everything that it seems absolutely incredible now that they're last championship win was 12 years ago that's a whole generation of fans here growing up not knowing what it's like to have Liverpool as league champions and yet they, they're getting closer aren't they they're getting closer but can you say they could win it next year Rob you can't because of the likes of Arsenal and Manchester United you know there was a time when you would say yeah Liverpool will win it again next year but you can't say that they will win it next year they have a, a tremendously talented talented bunch of guys they're going to have Champions League football all the cup competitions very very difficult and Liverpool are edging closer and closer they have finished as runners up this season with their highest points tally for 14 years since they won the league championship back in 1988 and Gerard Houllier despite his long absence through illness he I'm sure will be the first to pay credit to Phil Thompson and the backroom staff who kept Liverpool's campaign on track and despite those early setbacks they still managed to make a fight of it but they'll know Arsenal will be as competitive next year that Manchester United will rediscover their qualities for the dogfight and it promises to be an epic premiership again next season.